Yo, Snapchat, let's discuss jibs, jobs, and how it applies to the current political landscape and also the future of jobs and the future of employment and tasks and gig-based economy. So I'm pretty sure this entire Australian election is going to be about jobs and innovation and growth. Um, and every party is going to be competing on a different future vision, which is kind of cool in a way. It's pretty obvious why jobs is always a hot political issue and every party wants to, you know, increase more jobs. I mean, because for the vast majority of people, jobs are their income, their livelihood, their rent, their food, their whole... But because the typical nine to five job has become such a like, you know, you need it to eat and, and clothe yourself and house yourself, I think in society it's become a bit of a Stockholm syndrome. People love them and hate them. The futurists in me and I know other science party candidates want full unemployment via automation, technological automation. But you can't do that because the politicians always have to go towards more jobs, more employment. I actually think the science party should be a little bit more edgy and say that we do want full unemployment and start that discussion, start explaining to people why technological automation is going to replace jobs and how we can solve that. It's a bit controversial though because people have this idea of hard work and jobs are tied to growth and opportunity, which is not necessarily the case. Jobs is becoming decoupled from innovation these days. I actually think the traditional like 9 to 5 job, you know, where you go to an office and work there 40 hours a week, you know, Monday to Friday, and also the education system where you, you know, spend 3-4 years getting a degree at university, it's broken. That entire system is actually going to lead to our downfall. Um, there's predictions out uh, everywhere saying that about half of the jobs across the entire planet will disappear within 10 to 20 years. And the issue is precisely this, if you're an accountant and you work 40 hours a week as an accountant and people ask you, what are you doing? You're like, I'm an accountant. Cool. Now when technology automates accounting, what do you do? Well, accounting was your specialty, that's all you did, that was your income. Now you have to go back to university, do another three-year degree, say you want to become a lawyer. So you do a three-year degree, four-year degree, get your lawyer certificate, become a lawyer. Cool, mate, now you're a lawyer. And then lawyers get automated by technology, which is already happening. <laughs> what do you do now? Do you go back again? Like, it's, it's a cyclic loop, it, it causes the issue. You're essentially taking this archaic education system, uh, which is a relic of the industrial era to create factory workers, and our kind of like static, non-agile workforce, and then competing against technological We know technology progresses at an exponential pace, like starts off small and then straight up the exponential curve. And yet we're trying to compete against that with a very static model. But since it's 2016 and we still need an income to not die, um, yeah, <laughs> um, then jobs are still a huge part of that. So okay, if you're a 60 year old politician, what do you do? Well, the first thing many of them try is like they basically cut the taxes for corporations and businesses, hoping that if they cut taxes, it costs them less, therefore they can hire more people. Eh, it doesn't really work that way, and it's a little bit corrupt. The next big tactic is innovation and startups and entrepreneurship. If we can get more people creating more businesses, then they can hire more people, and then we solve the issue. But I'm a huge fan of startups and entrepreneurship because I think they add a lot of value to society, and that is how you innovate and move forward. But they don't create jobs. You can actually get more done and add more value with less employees due to technology. Like when Facebook bought out Instagram a few years ago for a bit over a billion dollars, I think they had about 11 employees. And there's another tactic for like increasing jobs in an area that just backfires and doesn't work. Another thing that old white guys sitting on 120 grand a year do to tick their KPIs. So let's talk about the one in Wollongong. So in Wollongong we have like the University of Wollongong, but we have this entirely separate campus called the Innovation Campus, which is meant to be a place for innovation and business to kind of merge, like startup entrepreneurship and enterprise and business. But they're charging premium real estate prices per square meter, so the only people that can afford it are multinational corporations. So then you get groups like Advantage Wollongong whose mission is to go and like basically increase jobs in the region. So what do they do? They go to multinational corporations and they talk about how you can have good employee retention for low cost. They're like, sweet, I can set up a call center in the innovation campus, I can employ 50 people to be really cheap, and we won't have high turnover, we can keep them. Yay! The police and the government employees are like, sweet, we've just got 50 new jobs in the region, let's cut a ribbon, let's celebrate, yeah, fucking tick that KPI, motherfuckers. Rinse and repeat and suddenly Wollongong's a great place, it's full of like call centers. No like high skilled jobs, just low paying call center jobs. Ranty, 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 rant. Okay, let's go on an idea of like how to fix this possibly. So I've often talked about this idea of a jobs RPG, like a role playing game, where everyone has multiple skill sets. So you might be an accountant, but you might also be a really good graphic designer. So you might be level 99 accountant, level 30. Like people have naturally have skills across different industries. We, we, you know, just because we're an accountant doesn't mean that's the only thing we're good at doing. So I kind of like to imagine something like Freelancer.com, but a little less evil. Freelancer.com, all they do is outsource first world work to third world work, and so it becomes a commodity, which doesn't really help the people in the first world. So imagine when you wanted to work, you, just, you could just pick and choose high paying tasks matched to your skills and your interests. So say if you're a level 99 accountant, you get paid 99 bucks an hour doing that. Level 35 graphic designer, 35 bucks. And if you scale that out, it means the entire workforce becomes resilient and agile, because if any of those uh, particular skill sets get automated, you're good. You can fall back on all the other ones very easily, instantly. It also couples education and work. Um, we, we can't have this system where you've got to go back to university for three years and do nothing. You can like level up like a game. 
your skills. The simple analogy that exists today where this kind of is similar is like, it's kind of like everyone becoming a freelancer or a contractor. I mean, as a freelancer, you have the, you're essentially your own boss and you get to choose what you do. But none of our education systems teach you how to be a freelancer. It's, it's a little tricky because you're essentially going to like do, you're going to wear all the hats. You're going to market yourself, you're going to sell yourself, you're going to do all the work or the admin. Yeah. But the cool thing about freelance work is it's nowhere near as like starting a startup and trying to sell a product because you're essentially just selling your skills and your time, which is really no different to a job, just in a little bit of a different way. And with freelancing, just like this jobs RPG platform, you level up your skills and referrals and you get more money. I mean, a lot of freelancers will start off about 20 bucks an hour and then go up to like something around 100 bucks an hour or more. A lot of freelancers will work like the typical 40 hours a week or even more to, on, on the race that they start on. But then as they, as they scale up, they can actually have more free time because they can do less work. So for example, with the consulting work I do, um, if I work a full week, I could probably earn around five grand, um, which means I can value time over money, which I do. And so I can do one day or two days a week. There's a great uh, essay called uh, In Praise of Idleness by Bertrand Russell, which talks about in, the, in our idle time, in our free time, that's when we find our true callings, our true passions. And this is what you often see happening, actually. So freelancers will start doing, you know, five days a week, six days a week, seven days a week. They'll get down to like one or two, and then they'll launch a startup in the rest of the time and start employing people. The other thing too is like all this work is typically remote. Like I work with clients in Sydney and overseas, um, but I work from here <laughs> most of the time and just travel up occasionally for a meeting. So particularly for Wollongong and other regional areas that are struggling with like how do we keep our young people and talent in the region, um, this could be it. Like telecommuting, teleworking, even though I hate those words. <laughs> Imagine if we had like freelance hubs, almost like co-working spaces where if, if you happen to lose your job and yet you've got some skills, you can just go in there and they train you and they help you get customers and clients and get back up on your feet. And like right now, remote working kind of sucks because I mean, the best tools we have is like Skype and video chat and like text chat and Slack and all these other products. Um, but it's going to get better, particularly with like VR and AR, which are coming online this year. Like imagine being able to work remotely with a bunch of uh, other people from around the world in a full like 3D VR environment. That'd be pretty cool. Or if you see Microsoft's HoloLens example, they have a thing called holoportation, which is essentially like teleporting a hologram. So it looks like they're there, but they're not. And they're interacting with the actual room. And ultimately, the full-day working week should be reduced from four days to three days to two days, and then eventually get all get a basic income, so we can pick and choose what we want to do rather than taking the first job we're offered. So anyway, stuff your thoughts. I future a bit of a ranty rant today, um, and political. Well, um, tomorrow I'll go hardcore future again. Yeah, cool. Have a good day, guys.